Hey there, welcome back. My name's Chris, and today let's talk about some of the differences between developing for embedded systems and for desktop and PC systems. The primary difference in my experience is that on a desktop or a PC or a server, when you're doing development and you see behavior that is not what you expect, it's usually a bug in your own code. On embedded systems, it's not so much the case. Oftentimes it's a problem either in uh, the OS, in drivers, or even hardware. As an example, this week I had planned on just putting together a quick video on how to put a device to sleep and wake it back up and make that part of your application. It was going to be, in my estimate, a couple hours of development work, shooting video. I could probably get it all edited, published, everything in under a day, even with meetings and things like that going on. After a couple of days, it turned out that that was not going to be the case. So let's take a look at what I discovered, how I discovered it, and how you go about debugging these types of things. So what we have is this, I've got this application running. It's just got a box moving back and forth. The idea is that you can see that it's running and you can tell when it's been paused. So if I go to sleep and the box is here, when I wake back up, it should continue from the same spot. It shouldn't jump. That will tell me that it actually did pause and it wasn't just some, you know, trickery of the backlight turning off. I could hook this up to a power supply that shows how much current is drawing. Um, but I'd feel that this is good enough and it's less crap on my desk to do that. So what I then did was I wired up this switch. It's just a, you know, toggle open close. So when it is in, yeah, I guess here, this is the schematic here, right? So I've got this, uh, switch between 3.3 and this signal a one. So a one is here and three, three, and then I've got a pull down to ground here. So when it boots up or in the on position, this is closed. So a one is high. When I open the switch, so this, we're going to get a falling edge and we're going to drop to zero. So on falling edge, what I want to do is I want to go to sleep. Sleep is basically two things. We'll shut off the backlight for the display, and then we'll put the processor into sleep mode. I guess right before we go to sleep, we'll register for a rising edge interrupt so that when this gets closed again and 3.3 comes across, we end up with a rising edge. And when that rising edge happens, we wake up the processor and then turn back on the backlight. Really, really simple. So we've got it running right now. Uh, it is closed, so it's high. So when we um, open this switch, it goes to sleep. I heard it shut off. When I turn it back on, however, I get a white screen. What the hell's up with that, right? So the first thing we want to do is see what the status of the device itself is. So if I just listen to the serial port, you can see we've got output. It's outputting the, an X position and direction. That's simply some debug output from that box that's moving across the screen. This tells us that the code, the application is still running. We're just not getting any output on the display. So the first thing we have to do is we have to understand at least a little bit about how displays work. I know that the backlight is on because it's visible. It's not a completely black screen but it's all white, which indicates to me that this display has not been initialized. So something has happened where the display has lost its initialization. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go over and look at the schematic and ask what happens exactly when I shut that off, turn it back on. So this platform is open source hardware. So here is the schematic. And if we zoom in on it, We've got the module here, but if I look for the display power, the way that this display works is it's got the LED controls the backlight. And then we have this VCC, which is the power for the display. And they both come back to display power and it comes through this FET. Now the interesting thing 
they both come back to display power. And that actually comes up through this FET. One of the things that I found is this actually inverts the logic. So if I have this display power low, that turns on the backlight and high turns it off. But that comes over and it comes through this IO expander over here. The important piece to note though, is that the single power controls both the power to the back or to the whole display and the power to the backlight. That is not what we want. When we lose power to the display, the display loses all of its initialization. And that's why it comes up in this, you know, white background going on here. We just want to drive the LED or the backlight to off and leave the display itself powered so that it doesn't lose its initialization. This could be worked around. I could go into the display driver and add some sort of method to allow me to deinitialize it or reinitialize it, or in the code for the application, I could remove the display driver and re add it, which would reinitialize it. Bunch of things like that. None of that is easy. Regardless, I consider this a bug in the hardware itself. So that's the first thing that you have to be aware of is there could be bugs in the hardware. So once I found that, I came over. First thing I did was I reported it as a bug uh, on the Wilderness Labs issue repository so that it can get fixed in the next spin. I don't know when that's going to happen. I don't know when the next rev of this hardware is going to come out. And I wanted to continue development. So the question is, how do we do that? Typically what we'll do is we'll look for a way to do what's called bodging or doing some sort of a wire on the board or cut some trace or something that can change physically what this hardware is doing. What I ended up doing was I wanted to separate that power, which is, I think this one here and the led, which is further down from one another and control the led signal directly by itself. So what I did was I took another one of these displays and if I can get it to focus here, what I did was I clipped off this pin right here, the led pin. It's a little blurry, but you can see that that pin is now missing. So I clipped it off and then I soldered on, on the other side, a jumper wire. So I can take this wire and I can plug it into one of these pins on uh, the micro bus, any of them actually, and control it separately. These other two wires are going to the clock and data lines, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But the first bug that I tried to work around was swapping that. So we'll take the display off. You can see this one has all of its pins and swap it for this other one. And then I'm just gonna use one of the signals on the Microbus one socket to control backlight power. And now if we go over and look at the code, you'll see what I've done is I no longer use this backlight, but I will use the Microbus one pin uh, for the typically it's labeled int for interrupt, but we're not using it as an interrupt. We're just using it as an on off, but it also changes the backlight inversion to this. So now we're going to directly control that pin instead of the power. So I'm going to deploy that and we'll see how that behaves. All right, so we're back running. Now I should be able to go to sleep and wake back up. And there we go. The display comes back up and we've got text. We've got our box. All of that looks good. So we know the display is doing what it's supposed to do. But you'll notice that box is not moving and it still says hello from boot and it should say hello from wake at this point. So question is what's going on? Is it still running or is it frozen? So 
Again, we'll go over and look at a console. We can see that the app is still running. So what the hell is going on this time? This is what these wires are for. Again, I've got them connected to the clock and signal. The fact that this isn't moving tells me that nothing is telling the display to update. So it's still in its last state from when it shut down. All of the bits are in that state. So its memory, its frame buffer, still has whatever it was when I shut it down. When it came back up, we're not getting any signal to it. And that's my suspicion. So I've soldered a couple of wires on here so that I can hook it to the oscilloscope. Again, that's not something a desktop developer typically has to worry about, but it's not uncommon here to need either a logic analyzer or an oscilloscope. So I'm gonna hook up some wires and we'll take a look at a scope trace. So I've rebooted the device, so it's running just as before, but I have the scope probes to clock and data on this. And I don't have a camera on the scope itself, but I do have a remote terminal here, so we can see what it looks like. This top, the pink, is the clock, and then the yellow is the data. And I can zoom in a little bit here. It's not terribly important. I'm not going to go through how to read this or what's going on. The important thing to note is that we have clock signal here and we have data. So data is going from the microcontroller up to this display. If I shut it off, well, go to sleep, it's not shutting off. You can see that the scope trace goes dead. Then if I resume, it came back and it's moving. Well, that's interesting. Go to sleep again, wake back up, and it's dead. I find that about five to 10% of the time, it will work after one wake. I've never seen it survive twice. And so now I have nothing here on the scope. So that tells me that the microprocessor is not sending a signal out the SPI bus to the display after wake. So again, next thing to do is go over to the Meadow issues and report yet another issue. So you can see that in doing this development, I've run into two different bugs. One is a hardware bug. The other was an probably an OS, maybe driver, it's definitely a native low-level bug, though, and I've reported it. As of this recording, I have yet to solve the problem. I've done a little bit more digging to try to figure out what's going on and run some tests, but I haven't found it yet. And that is really what I wanted to talk about today. The difference between doing embedded or IoT development and PC or server-based development. When you run into a bug, you cannot always assume that it's a bug in your code. Sometimes, especially if you've been doing this for any length of time or doing complex projects, building your own hardware, you're going to run into bugs that are not explained by your own code, but are further down the stack somewhere. Maybe in the OS, maybe in the hardware itself. It takes a different mindset and some different tools to be able to go and chase these down and to either work around them or find fixes. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.